Even time's in a rush, but it's going nowhere. Ready to rumble. Everyone's connected, but no one is connecting. The human element has long been missing. Tell me, have you seen it? I'm always amazed about Vegas. It's such a unique place. I mean, there's no place like it in the world. At the moment, Marquis just feels like my home. It's just very exciting times in EDM right now. The best part of my job is by far the fans. And getting that crowd reaction, I, I guess that's an addiction. If you really do connect with the crowd, it doesn't always happen, but when you do, oh my God, it's just, it's the best feeling on the planet. If I'm not having a good time, then the crowd's not gonna have a good time. And you actually see people crying or, or going crazy. And you know, there's, 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 you know, that's something that money cannot buy. You know, for me it's life, to play music for other people, and I think there's a DJ in every single human being. It's ironic, you know, the, the more rich you are, the more stuff you get for free, life's unfair like that. <laughs> it is, it really is. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ivan Van Buren here, really excited about this one, you're watching Vegas Vibe. Tell me how to see it. Tonight on Vegas Vibe, Armin Van Buren. Five-time number one DJ in the world and 2014 Grammy nominee gives Vegas Vibe unprecedented access to his Vegas dance party from touchdown to after party. Actually, I made the track in one day. It was actually made in four hours. And then I sent it to Sander and Carlo. And I remember uh, Sander calling me up saying, oh, my wife's, my wife really loves it. And I sent it to the A&R department at Armada. And they were like, yeah, nice, you know. And I wasn't planning on releasing it at all. It was no, it was just, uh, you know, a, a gimmick for the show. You know, something as a contrast to all the beautiful melodies and, and, and the great breakdowns and the beautiful visuals. You know, just as a contrast. We did the premiere of the show in the Ziggo Dome and uh, there was such a huge demand for the track. And it was actually kind of funny because I, I always told everybody, you know, the, the biggest tracks you always make in four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I really do hope that people see the fun of ping pong. It's a fun little track. Please don't take it too serious. <laughs> it's just the same thing with the video. You know, I crack myself up when we we're thinking of that video idea. It's just, it's something fun, something to smile. <laughs>
think uh, some of some parts of the EDM scene are way too serious you know it's all everybody's too cool for school you cannot do this you cannot do that you have to stay within your BPM you have to stay within your formula you cannot change your sound I'm like you know I'm an artist I do what I want and that's, that's sort of a statement as well for in that sense it's it's where's the where's the fun you know you should be able to laugh I think music is, is very serious and it sh should be taken very serious but if you watch a good movie there's always one or two fun moments in it right every movie you watch there's always something to laugh or something that's ridiculously funny um, and I'd like I'd like to approach my shows like that as well you know ping pong is the fun moment and then after that we can get serious again with this is what it feels like and beautiful life and alone alone is actually a very serious song you know it's, a, it's an awareness song. and it's beautiful it's one of my favorite tracks of the album and it does really well It's going nowhere Everyone's connected But no one is connecting The human element Has long been missing Tell me, have you seen it? But that's so serious. So as a contrast to that track, we have ping pong. <laughs> I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Grammy experience was something else. I knew that it was important, I just didn't know it was this important. I mean, the nomination alone grants you a certain title. It's, it's just really big. It's really that big. The, the nomination alone gives you so much uh, credit. And I remember I was in uh, New York just a few days after the announcement of the nomination. I went to a couple of interviews and I was announced everywhere as Grammy nominated producer, no longer as five times DJ Mag number one, which I, I always thought was my biggest achievement. But, you know, apparently, uh, especially in the US, a Grammy nomination is even bigger. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was absolutely a dream coming true, absolutely. Oh, without you now, this is what it feels like. I've been making music professionally for more than 20 years and I had the pitfalls, I, I've, I've been there, you know, I, I did the, uh, I made the mistakes of trying to make follow-ups. I just told myself I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to be in the studio, be creative and let it flow, let whatever idea comes at me, just, you know, let it go. State of Trance is, uh, it's just going really, really well, it's phenomenal. I mean, I, I always thought I would end it around episode 500 and now we're at episode 661. And uh, the following is amazing. I mean, we trend every week worldwide on, on social media. And it sort of means that, you know, my idea as a kid sort of works because I always dreamed of having a show. If you're not into the scene, if you're not really close to the records, to the new music, you listen to the State of Trans radio show and you're completely up to date with the latest and best in trance and progressive. <laughs> Episode 1000, I think we have to go to the moon or something. <laughs> so far, every week, and I mean, every single week there's been a track that I'm like, wow, you know, 
this really stands out or bring something new creatively. And I'm particularly uh, happy to see that there's so much new talent, new young talent coming up and, and, and rising, you know, really young people like 21, 22 years old, bringing fresh trancey sounds, different, but, you know, moving it forward and it's still euphoric, it's still uplifting and it's, it's just very exciting times in EDM right now. Armada's doing really well, we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary. We invest in um, a variety of music right now. I mean, Armada is known for trance, and that's what always will be the number one at Armada. But uh, we, uh, we have a lot of cool Deep House labels now as well. Deep House labels, Electro House labels, you know, everything with dance music. And uh, it's doing extremely well. I mean, only the concept was born in the clubs. And I told my manager, I said, oh, look, you know, I can play 12 hours of songs, but I think if you're at this level, you got to bring some excitement. You got to bring some live artists or some live acts. So Arm and Only was no longer just a DJ set, but there was a lot of live elements being added to it, you know, just not to bore the crowd, but still the DJ set being the basis of everything. So Arm and Only is, in, in short, it's a, it's a non-stop DJ set by myself where the music doesn't stop and it's still a freestyle set, so it's not pre-programmed. But what, what is pre-programmed is if I decide, for example, to play a track like This Is What It Feels Like, I, I play the track and we've designed a system so that the people in front of house and backstage can see that I'm playing the track. So as soon as I start playing this is what it feels like, there's time code running and everybody sees that I'm playing that track. The singer will be getting ready and will walk on stage exactly at the moment where he needs to. He hears a click track on his in-ears, he hears a countdown, the audience doesn't hear that and the crowd doesn't even know that that's happening. So I think it's exciting. What is particularly special about the Intense Tour that we're doing right now with Armin Oli is we work with a theater director. His name is Joost T. Uh, he's from the Netherlands. He's one of the top three directors in the Netherlands and he comes from the world of theater. I went to a few of the Cirque du Soleil shows in Vegas. I was looking at these shows thinking, you know what, for me this is the future of dance music because we can learn so much from the world of theater, uh, from the way they, they work with lights, the way they work with visuals, the impact that the artists have. So combining those elements was really exciting and I want to stress that Arm & Only is not a theater show. It's still a, you know, a dance show, it's still, but our knowledge combined with his knowledge brought the intent show. I really vividly remember a gig that I did on the 5th of February 2000. Uh, when I played in the courtyard and cream in Liverpool in the UK. It was the first time I ever played in the UK, which was the mecca for any DJ back then. And I got to play the opening set for Set Fontaine. And uh, I remember playing that set and the crowd was ecstatic. And I came back to my hotel room and I went to sit into the bathtub. And I looked up, I'm like, I think this is it. I think this is what I want to, this is it. This, this is what I want to reach. This is, it's going somewhere now. After that one performance, you know, other clubs in the UK wanted to book me in the US and the rest is history. So if I have to mention one moment, that, then it's that particular gig. My DJ philosophy is don't be a prisoner of your own style. You know, I, I'm a trans guy by heart and I'm not afraid to call myself a trans guy because that's the music that I love. But um, that's what I do as a DJ. I try to mix it up. I try to keep it exciting for myself because I learned if I'm not having a good time, then the crowd's not going to have a good time. You know, it's a very simple, basic rule. Okay, don't laugh, but I bought a life-size Darth Vader <laughs> and, an, and an R2-D2. Uh, in 1996, they had some movie uh, replicas that were made and I found two of them in the Netherlands. I have a game room now, which is something I always dreamed of. I told my wife if, if we get the big house, which we have, I said, I want to have one room that's dedicated to video gaming because that's what I love. <laughs> You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi nerd. I love science fiction. I love Indiana Jones, you know, Star Wars and all that sort of stuff. And I always dreamed of having a life-size Darth Vader. So there you go. He's in my, he's in my game room right now. It's, it's phenomenal. And everybody's scared of him too. <laughs> Marquee has been very good for me. And I ra I'd rather play for a crowd that's that's into my music than a club that's like, you know, just bottle service and people not even dancing and all that sort of stuff. And I like that Marquis has always had a really, really good dance floor and it's always been about the music. And at the moment, Marquis just feels like my home. I'm always amazed about Vegas. It's such a unique place. I mean, there's no place like it in the world. Actually, my daughter said something uh, that was <laughs> the kind, of, kind of embarrassing a little bit. I've started to organize a free event uh, in Leiden, just like a few hundred meters from my house. 
and uh, it was a ma as every year it's a tradition at you know the whole city comes and this year we had like I think 15,000 people or something ridiculous it was really really amazing a lot of young people a lot of people from Leiden where I'm from my daughter went with my mother-in-law they went for a little walk and it was they were close to the site and my daughter said yeah that's the noise that my daddy's always making <laughs> Oh God, little does she know, she'll inherit all my noise one day. The Los Pollos Hermanos t-shirt was, um, was actually a joke. I saw a good friend of mine from the UK who I went to visit and he had one in uh, grey. And I loved it and I said, where did, he, where did you buy it? Uh, somewhere online. So, and I, and I, he had it in grey so I bought it in yellow. I was packing my shirt for Tomorrow World. Uh, in Atlanta, so I thought, you know, I'll wear the shirt. Little did I know that everybody was raving more about my shirt than my DJ said after. <laughs> the best part of my job is by far the fans, you know. That's the only thing that I cannot get used to. I mean, I'm sort of done with jet lags, airports, heart, uh, security, hotels, the gym in the hotels, bad room service. And now I'm so tired. <laughs> you know, the fans all make, make it worth it. Especially now with the Armin Only show, I learned that it, it, it's great to have success on your own, it's fantastic, but it's more fun to have success with a big group. Because sharing success with a big group is so much more fun. But we're making people happy with, with the ideas that we had and all our, all our talents. And you actually see people crying or, or going crazy. That's something that money cannot buy. It's, it's the power of being on stage, playing the music you love, going absolutely crazy, being into the music and, and getting that crowd reaction. I, I guess that's an addiction. And I actually read books about it because I know it's so much of an addiction that you could actually get addicted to it. It's the, the adrenaline rush when you're on stage and you see the crowd and it's hard to describe. It's such an emotional thing. If you really do connect with the crowd, it doesn't always happen, but when you do, oh my God, it's just, it's the best feeling on the planet. I mean, that and my children, it's the only thing that I live for. I'm happy to see that part of the EDM scene has hit mainstream, not all of it. Trance is definitely not the most popular genre in EDM right now. There's still a very big underground following to it, and it's still something very real and pure about it. Yes, I feel the pain of, of certain people about the fact that it's not underground. It's, it, sometimes it doesn't feel it's ours anymore. You know, you hear it on mainstream radio. Music is an evolution. Music will never be the same thing. You know, if you release the same track twice, people won't buy it because you've already released it. It's a natural course of things. People grow older, new stuff is being invented, new music is coming. It's something that you and I cannot prevent from happening. It's just a fact of the matter. Music is growing and you cannot stop it. You cannot stop commercialization. You know, as long as, as I know for a fact that I'm still doing it with the heart in the right place and being truly passionate about it, I can still say that with hand on my heart. You need to be in shape, especially with the traveling and the jet lags. And when I get home, then the real job starts for me because I have two little ones. I have to take out the trash and, you know, take care of my wife. When I'm home, I want to be there for my wife. It's actually on tour that I rest now because <laughs> I don't have the kids. <laughs> you have to be some, some sort of an athlete. And I see it with the Armin Only crew because they're like, this, now we get to the stage with this tour when it's really hardcore touring and we do like two or three Armin Only shows in a weekend. And that for a lot of people is very tough. And then I see it, I see it in the team if people look tired and they're like, wow, how do you do this? But it's the energy of the fans that, you know, that we all live off. And it's really something that you need, otherwise you're not able to cope. It's not about money, man. When I'm on stage, I don't, I don't think like, oh, you know, we sold 11,000 tickets, so that's 11,000 times. No, you, that's not what goes through your mind. It's the energy that keeps you alive. And, and the gym. <laughs> I have a great team of people around me. I mean, you, you're looking at Armin Van Buren right now, but it almost feels unfair to call the show Armin only because it's definitely not about Armin only. I'm the only DJ, but it, there's, there's a, a big team that travels with me. We have a very, very professional and uh, passionate team. Well, the Armin only show will literally see all the parts of the world. It's exciting. I really couldn't do this without, especially my tour manager Sander and his company, 250K. Those guys are just phenomenal with the visual work that they've done. Um, so I'm really looking forward to extend this show, actually working on the next Armin Only tour already, in the back of my head, working on the next album. Because I know we've got something that nobody else is doing and it feels unique. If I would be downloading the Beatport Top 10, putting them on a USB key and, and hop on private jets and travel from A to B, that would be financially probably the most wise decision. It's not about that for me anymore. It's For me, it's all about the excitement of, of doing something that sparks me creatively. I recently said, if you're born a DJ, you'll die a DJ. 
And I say that because I know a lot of DJs since 1991 that got older, like in the 50s, and some of them announced their retirement, and all of them are back DJing right now. I don't think there'll ever be a moment where I officially retire simply because it's an addiction. You know what the fun thing is? For me, I love playing for big stadiums, playing EDC, 100,000 people, that's fantastic, phenomenal. But if you give me a club of 200 people and good sound system, you know, friendly people, bottle of water, and my laptop with, with all this great music, I'm happy. I don't need to play for 100,000 people just to, to keep going. You know, for me, it's life to play music for other people. And, I think there's a DJ in every single human being because I know for a fact that anybody who's seeing this has had this. You buy an album, let's say the new Pharrell album. I don't know, you like Happy, you like the song and you put on the album and then all of a sudden you run into Marilyn Monroe, which is another track on the album. And you're like, wow. And then you play it again and you play it again. And you already liked Happy and then you hear Marilyn Monroe. So what is the first thing you do? You share it with your close ones, your family or your friends or your sister or your brother. That is DJing. That is the, it's the excitement for music that you want to share. And I'm just excited about music, man. And that hasn't faded. Uh, so I think to answer your question, I think the moment I will retire from music is the moment when I don't feel that spark anymore. But I felt that spark since I was 13, 14. I'm 37 now. I don't think it will go away soon. Because every day there's a track that I hear or a piece of music or an idea or or a plug-in or some sounds that I really like that sparks something in me that I want to share. So as long as that is not going to go away, I'll keep DJing. If, if I would have had my phone here, I could have, I could have uh, played you the melodies that were on my phone. <laughs> like, da -da 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 da 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 and I come home and like, what am I doing? <laughs> I did have crashed hard drives that had, you know, big projects on them that I couldn't find. So. But I fix that now. I have a server and I have a backup server and a tape streamer who backs up the backup server. So I'm not gonna use it, lose any music anymore, you know. But that's that's a, that's a nightmare. I've I've lost some tracks due to uh, crashing hard drives, but that's not gonna happen to me anymore. Uh uh. And I'd love to bring a state of trance back to EDC as well. Um, I think it's just main stage this time, which is exciting. I, I have some new tracks that I'd like to premiere. I actually did a track with a Japanese artist. Just finished and it might premiere in Vegas. I don't know yet, depends if I'm allowed to play it yet. I just did a remix for Idina's uh, Let It Go, Idina Menzel, for Disney. that a lot of my fans were like, is he really remixing Disney? Is he remixing Let It Go? But it was funny because the remix was announced and a lot of people were like really upset, like, oh, you're going commercial and da 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 da. And I said, I don't think it's a commercial mix. It's, an, it's a really, it's an Armin trance mix. It's 90% Armin, it's 10% Let It Go. Because I told Disney, I said, well, you know, they asked me to remix the song. I'm like, I like the song, but I'm not sure if you're gonna like the remix because I'm gonna take it apart completely. <laughs> and Disney said, well, yeah, go for it. We're asking you. So I said, it's not, it's not gonna be for crossover radio. It's an underground dance music Armin van Buren remix. And they said, we love it. I might, I might, I might play that one in, uh, at EDC because I feel like I'm the last of the Mohicans on the main stage playing pure trance sometimes. So I have to mix it up a little bit, but that's what I plan on doing.